Thank you to everyone who's been able to join us today on our very special Living Well Beyond Cancer presentation for National Cancer Survivorship Month. Uh, heads up, we have had some technical issues behind the scenes. We are doing our best to work around that and bring you the presentation, but apologies in advance if that all doesn't go well. So today, it is really my honor to let you know that we're going to be highlighting several cancer survivors by playing a video and then doing a live Q&A chat to give you the opportunity to ask them questions at the end. The goal of the series is to provide those whose lives have been affected by cancer with the tools and resources to live well beyond cancer. We want you to be able to do things that are important to you, things like going for a walk, returning to or continuing to work, enjoying your family, your grandchildren, returning to the gym, or activities that make you you. Today, our survivors that are going to join us, I'm going to name just their first names. We have Aaron, James, Hopefully Diane and Jenna, they will all be highlighted on our video. As I said, after the presentation, there's gonna be a live Q&A. Just so that you all know, the information that we're sharing in this is not in this webinar is not designed to be medical advice. It's it is only intended to present an approach, view, statement, or opinion of the presenter, which may be helpful or of interest to patients, caregivers, and practitioners. Under no circumstances is this to serve as medical advice. Before we close, we will also review upcoming topics and let you know where you can find any of our past presentations. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and play our video highlighting our wonderful survivors and then join you for a live q a after it hi my name is diane baldemore i'm a physical therapist a licensed lymphedema therapist as well as the revital program director for the houston and san antonio markets one of my biggest accomplishments in life is being a cancer survivor I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer back in 2015, and I'm proud to say that I'm six and a half years cancer free, and I'm out here in Houston helping those individuals who may be going through a similar journey as I did. My name is Aaron Lawson, and I'm 49 years old, and I was diagnosed with bladder cancer, high grade, um, between T1 and T2. Hello everyone, I'm Jenna and I'm thrilled to share with you my journey with rehab. About nine years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer and chose to go through a double mastectomy instead of radiation. I had a resection done to remove the cancer from my bladder. Um, I went in and talked to the, a surgeon and we were going to try to save the bladder, um, first of all. So we, I went in and had another resection done, which took more of the um, area around where the tumor was and kind of like scraped deeper into the bladder. And then we, that was followed by immunotherapy. Um, ultimately, that did not work. The cancer was back in the bladder right away and it was everywhere. And it was pretty conclusive that the bladder was not able to be saved. So we moved ahead with um, surgery, which was a radical cystectomy, which is the removal of the bladder. In addition, there was a prostatectomy and a lymphendectomy where they removed the prostate and they removed um, the surrounding lymph nodes from the bladder. I underwent both surgery and chemotherapy to address my cancer. The surgery is pretty self-explanatory in that they were able to remove the part of the colon that contain the malignant neoplasm and then reattach the remaining part of my gastrointestinal tract. The chemotherapy is a little more involved. I was administered an array 
of drugs. At the time, there was no rehab even mentioned, and um, my doctors told me that those aches and pains and difficulties were just part of the surgery that I had to go through and the medications that I was on at the time. And then I moved to Texas about three years ago, and shortly after that, I found that the cancer had returned, and this time it was stage four. So I had a lung biopsy and that led to a lot more unexpected pain. I didn't think it would be that bad. The treatments, uh, the medications that I was on after that were a lot stronger at this time. And with those medications, there was added neuropathy and joint pain and a lot of aches. It really drained my energy. There was a lot of fatigue associated with those medications and I just began to spend more and more time on the couch and that is a very unpleasant place to be. Part of the treatment for my specific cancer involved a series of surgeries. One was the removal of my ovary and my fallopian tube and then I underwent a large staging surgery which then they found out that the cancer was pretty aggressive. Um, I also underwent a series of fertility treatments to ensure that I was able to have children later on in life prior to starting five months of chemotherapy. My specific challenges from my surgeries and my medications and all the treatments that I was going through were, of course, the pain and the aches. Um, the fatigue led me to really not do the things that I used to pre-surgery and pre-treatment. I found that I uh, didn't enjoy doing things like cooking for my family. I even uh, realized, looking back on it now, that it hurt just to be hugged. And when my husband would reach out to hug me or squeeze me or whatever, I would always kind of brace myself to kind of protect the spots of me that hurt. And so all of those things together for pretty much any cancer patient can lead to just feeling isolated. The challenges ra uh, ranged from obviously physical challenges to the emotional and I would say psychological challenges that come from a stage four diagnosis. Now, I will tell you that some of the effects of the cancer, particularly for something affecting the colon, are obvious. You had to worry about things as unpleasant as incontinence, flatulence, loss of taste, tremendous loss of appetite, restrictions in the type of foods that you could eat. Occasionally, you have profound, profound nausea and vertigo. I suffered from extreme neuropathy and hyperpigmentation and discoloration of my entire body. Emotionally, I really can't put into words how devastating the cancer affected me. One of the biggest challenges I experienced while I was undergoing cancer treatment was the fatigue. It was so unreal. I've never experienced being tired like that ever in my life. And I actually sent myself to the hospital several times for dehydration and overexertion. The number one thing was learning to care for the urostomy and learning to live with the your asked me the equipment and sort of like what to expect, how to plan around that and everything. Um, the I was kind of sent home with a lot of what I needed to know from the um, from where I had the surgery. Um, but then shortly after that, I started to run into issues. The erectile dysfunction issues were a lot worse than what I was planning on, and then you know, after uncovering some more stuff, there was additional issues that needed to be addressed. So it wasn't quite as routine as I had believed it was going to be. And then also in the middle of the cancer treatment, I started noticing some changes in my fingertips, which really scared me because I utilized my hands a lot for my occupation. And I wasn't sure how that was going to affect my ability as a therapist in the long run. The emotional drain that begins to set in really affects just about every single waking moment. Well, and even to that point, it can lead to insomnia like it did for me. So before rehab, I think it's fair for me to say I was pretty much a mess. I wish I had known that there was such a thing as cancer rehab when I first got diagnosed. I think having that extra education in the beginning as I started um, cancer treatment would have been really helpful 
to prepare me on the treatment related side effects that were going to arise. And then knowing that there was someone out there that can guide me and, and support me as these side effects um, started to manifest in order to better accomplish my cancer treatments and also still live a very independent life. My oncologist, Dr. Masood Amjad, had presented the program to me and felt it would be of benefit. And in September of 2021, I began participating in the Revital program with my physical therapist, Ms. Deanna Meehan, who I cannot thank enough for all the wonderful time, effort, and energy she put in to helping me navigate my cancer journey. During one of my treatments, I was sitting in the clinic and the head of that clinic asked me how I was doing. And I told her that I just had some numbness and tingling in my hands and feet and that the neuropathy that was expected with some of the medications I was on was beginning to set in. And she said, oh, well, I've just heard about this cancer rehab program and it might really benefit you. And I was really surprised. I'd never heard that there was rehab specifically for cancer patients. I had no idea that this was even an option for me. I found out about cancer rehabilitation sort of on my own. Um, I was, after I got out from the surgery, I was, um, I thought I had everything I needed in place, um, but then, you know, af after about a month, um, I started to develop um, lymphedema and I needed to seek out a lymphedema therapist to, to help me manage that. Um, and that occurred around the, my pelvis and in my leg. And so that was a an ongoing th challenge that I needed help with. Um, in addition, I needed to find a urologist to sort of help with the issues resulting from the prostatectomy. And I needed to find uh, a urologist that sort of, they're, they were coming at it from a standpoint of, um, you know, somebody that had, had surgery rather than just um, somebody that was experiencing, you know, dysfunction. And honestly, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect when I went, but anything that could be offered to give me a little bit of hope and a little bit of change and a little bit of just breathing room to get through my life, I was up for it. So I went and like I said, I didn't really know what to expect, but the minute I walked into the clinic and met Aaron, I feel like that was the start of a wonderful change that affected pretty much every single area of my life. My experience in the cancer rehab program was very beneficial we engaged in routines, physical routines that covered cardiovascular, muscle flexibility, strength, balance, and overall physical well being through exercise on a regular basis. I utilized things from resistance bands to actual dumbbells, ankle weights in between and many of the other devices that I had in my home gym. Both uh, Ms. Meehan and Dr. Tripodi were able to tailor a program that fit my needs on several levels, especially in relation to helping me recover from the neuropathy. I went in with a lot of questions about what was happening, what I needed to do, how I was gonna live with it, um, specifically with the, the lymphedema, and um, I didn't know anything about it, and I got a lot of information um, to help understand it. When Aaron and I first sat down to talk about all my issues, he quickly realized that I had things stemming from surgeries six years prior to even meeting him. So he wasn't just addressing what was currently going on, he was addressing things that I had struggled with for years. And he educated me on how, you know, stretching out one area led to a pain relief in another area and why the core strengthening was so important. One of the great things about engaging in the Revital program is you get an opportunity to perform regular physical activity, which has tremendous benefits. And you don't have to go to a gym. In my case, because of the COVID outbreak, I did everything remotely. And I used at-home equipment like these simple elastic resistance bands. I was provided with a lot of um, techniques to help manage it and, and kind of the really like living with it and not trying to like eliminate it. 
and that was a big thing for me. Just so you don't think that you only work with pieces of uh, elastic, I also have graduated up to some pretty nice sized dumbbells. I noticed that my posture changed. Um, my energy started to kind of trickle back and I'll never forget the first day that a friend noticed that there was something different about me. And I said, it's my therapist. I, I feel like I'm like breathing without it hurting in all of my core areas again. I feel like I'm not just dragging myself around. So even though I didn't really know what to expect with physical therapy, it really changed so much about me and I kind of expect it, I guess I did expect it to change me physically. What I didn't expect is that it also changed me emotionally and very soon I found myself being able to just open up, breathe a little bit more and get back to some of those things I mentioned earlier that I really wasn't doing but were very important to me. It was really important for me to just try to get back to um, kind of life the way it was before um, as far as the activity you know I like to play basketball with my son and play frisbee and go on walks and bike rides and just sort of like light activity I wasn't in, I'm not involved in any like really um, strenuous sports but I like to be physically active and the most important thing for me was that my life not change um, that I that I I'm able to continue to do as much of the things that I love to do as possible. What mattered most to me while going through the cancer rehab program was regaining control of my body, restoring it to the type of functionality that I needed to live a life with dignity and with the type of independence and self-reliance that has been the cornerstone of my way of life. I'm used to being a resource for other people, and I wanted to get back to being that. I wanted to be back into being there for my family, being there for my faith community, being there for my friends, and being there for my clients. So I just wanted to make certain that I got the body in sync with the brain. The most important thing to me while I was going through rehab, of course, was how I was physically being able to get back to doing the things that I loved. But emotionally, I feel like rehab taught me that not all pain is something to be feared because for me, until I went through rehab, pain meant disease was coming back. And because of all the treatments and surgeries, of course, there was additional pain, but I couldn't really distinguish between the cancer pain and the surgery pain. And through rehab, it taught me that there are things about my whole cancer journey that actually are under my control. The word cancer is so big and I might not be able to control so much about it, but rehab taught me that there is parts of my pain that I am in control of. And that is very encouraging. It, it really brings hope back to my life doesn't have to be just controlled by this disease that is uncontrollable at times. It taught me that, you know, my doctors are in charge of helping keep me alive, but physical therapy became something that teaches me how to live that life more fully and actually enjoy it. When you progress physically, you enjoy the benefits that come from regular physical exercise. The release of endorphins, just maintaining a positive mental outlook, feeling stronger in between chemotherapy sessions, and modulating the side effects that chemotherapy can sometimes place on a person. The thing that I had to learn that surprised me the most, but it, it makes sense, but it, is that the, the surgeon is an expert at surgery and, and removing the cancer. And then there's a team to sort of help like discharge you from the hospital. But ultimately, um, you're going to end up needing to sort of put together your own care team. Once the surgery is done and you're discharged and they, they'll do some follow ups and stuff, but really like learning to like day-to-day -day manage your your body the way that it's been changed is really going to fall onto you and you're going to have to find your own 
group of specialists and other doctors that sort of help you with your care. You move at your own pace, at your own level, under the watchful guidance of the team that's been assigned to you. I would very much encourage anyone in my situation to to initiate these conversations with your doctor, seek out this kind of physical therapy. You will never regret it. Uh, it really does give you that hope that we all search out for when, when cancer just devastates our lives. We feel like sometimes this season is gonna be forever, but I really would encourage someone to get that physical therapy because the season doesn't have to last forever. The season will change and we can make parts of it change to our advantage and the, the tools that physical therapy give you to be more on top of what has happened to you are just invaluable. I heartily recommend the Revital program. I think it made a world of difference for me. And even though I'm still navigating my cancer journey, I think Revital program has been an integral part of my recovery so far. Revital has phenomenal therapists who are ready and willing to help you through your cancer journey from the beginning, in the middle, and even guide you through survivorship. It's wonderful to hear my husband especially say that he feels like he's gotten parts of me back after, you know, cancer doesn't just happen to the one person, it happens to the support um, structure that you have in, in your family and your friends. It happens to all of you. And so physical therapy gives life back to everybody and so I would highly recommend seeking out these programs and doing whatever it takes to, to get it all approved and do that work at home and um, take back what is really yours. I hope everybody joining us today enjoyed that as much as I did. I think it is incredibly brave of our panelists to have shared their story in the hope that other people can hear their story and what might work for them and get a community and some ideas. So I'm going to ask our panelists today, Jenna, James, Diane and Aaron to turn their cameras on, please. And then if you have any questions, for our survivors, please put them in the chat box. Um, I am gonna start us off while we wait. So welcome, uh, welcome to all our survivors and thank you for tolerating the little uh, snafu at the start we were having with our internet connectivity. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Aaron. So if you wanted to come off mute, can you share with me how did you know that you needed cancer rehab? Sure, thank you. Um, and hello to everybody. Um, I, I, um, after the uh, bladder removal surgery, I was on disability for about six weeks. And I started, um, then I, it was time for me to return to work. So I started, I was out of bed and I was upright more often. And I began to notice um, the, there was some noticeable swelling in my unmentionable areas yeah. and that I was ex extremely concerned about that. And so I did some online research, which is, I, I know the risks of that. And I was able, but I, I kind of narrowed it down and I was like, I think I've got um, lymphedema in my genital area. So I, that it's, that's not an easy thing to try to find a doctor for, at least that was my experience. Um, so I went on to my work provided um, list of all the different providers and I started going through and I um, called one and I'm like, is there anybody there that can help me with um, genital lymphedema? Yeah, they put me in touch. So this was just purely pure luck. They put me in touch with um, Jessica Wheeler from um, Revital Minnesota. And she had me come in. She started educating me about what we were dealing with. I had never heard of lymphedema. Um, then she also, in a subsequent visit, invited my wife to come with and explained to her also sort of what it is that, like, what to expect, how, how it's treated, um, and that it's, it needs to be managed, you know, for a lifetime. 
then uh, Jessica, um, she, we went through the process of, she was showing me how to massage the, the lymphatic fluid out. Uh, after I saw her a couple of times, all of a sudden the, the lymphedema moved into my, my leg and my um, pelvis more so than just the, the genitals. And so then she, we kind of transitioned into like getting compression on the leg, getting the swelling down, getting um, the, the garments that were, I was, I'm wearing today that I'll, I'll be wearing, you know, from now on and sort of prescribing that course of action. So it, when I went back to see the surgeon for a follow-up visit, they they had to give me the referral to begin with, so they knew that what I was going through. And um, th to my surprise, the the surgeon was like, I hadn't heard of this happening before, and he said that he had reached out, talked to some of his um, prior patients. The bladder cancer is it's kind of skews to an older population, and he said that some of the other patients had experienced that and were managing it, but they didn't like bring it back to his attention. So that was even, that that consequence was sort of even news to him. So I I, I was very fortunate. I sort of stumbled into, uh, yeah. with stumbled into meeting with Jessica and having her help me out. Um, and, but. It sounds like it, Aaron, that you had to do your own lead work, but you found a specialist. Um, so I thank you for sharing that. I think that's really important for people to know that, yes, you have a care team. You also can advocate like Aaron did. Um, we have some li lots of live questions coming in, people. So um, I think we're going to ask James, but somebody wanted to know, were any of you hospitalized related to your cancer? And how was the rehab transition? I guess they're saying if you had inpatient therapy to outpatient. So James, did you want to speak to that? Um, if you wanted to come off mute, were you hospitalized at all re related to your treatment? Yes, I had two periods of hospitalization after I had surgery. And uh, each time, well, the one that's very vivid is the episode in May of uh, 20. 2022, actually. No, it's yeah, May 20. Yeah, we're in June. No, May 2021. Uh, that period was uh, related to the fact that I, I've undergone chemotherapy for over 22 consecutive months. So it really put a beating on me. So I was hospitalized, uh, much to the credit of the folks at the facility where I was uh, hospitalized. Uh, once they stabilized me, the next step was, can we get you ambulatory so you can go home? And they did address that. It was uh, very structured. But again, the underlying, or I would say corollary issues of the neuropathy uh, and some of the, what I would say, you know, the, my, my diminution of physical strength couldn't be addressed other than, can we get you up? Can we get you walking? Yeah. James, what we, we like to say about inpatient versus outpatient is we get you up and moving inpatient, and then we yeah. really fine-tune it outpatient. Was that your experience? Uh, in fact, I would say that that uh, is, a, is a good summary because inpatient, you know, and I don't mean to get on a, a soapbox, but the insurance companies determine how long you're going to stay in the hospital. Right. And the sooner you can get up and walk, the sooner the insurance companies are saying, okay, well, now whatever's going to be done, do it at home. Yeah. So that's why uh, the Revital program helped me so much because they did a complete assessment of what I could do and what I wanted to do. And the goal was to a modicum of independence. Uh, and th that, in, uh, in your home right. environment though, right, James? So yeah, Absolutely. And I, I think that's key. When you, uh, a lot of people have, I've done rehab for many years and a lot of people, when you're in hospital, you don't quite realize all the things you may or may not be able to do. But then you get home and you start to look at, you know, your daily life and how you're going to manage that. Um, I'm going to ask this question uh, of Jenna. Uh, Jenna, what is the one thing you'd like cancer rehab therapists to know about working with patients like you? Um, my therapist was amazing. Every time I would walk in the door, um, Aaron Carr was my therapist and he was always so pleasant. Um, I think 
I am one of those that I want to check all the boxes, but when you have cancer and treatment and surgeries and all that, you don't feel well every day. And so if I missed some stretches or um, I didn't do what I was supposed to, he found a way to walk the line of, you know what, that is okay. I understand that your circumstances are going to be different from one day to the next, mm -hmm. but he also didn't let me off the hook. <laughs> you know, he had to be encouraging of, he well, you know, it. if we do this, then this great thing is going to happen. But I understand when you can't listen to your body. So he yeah. had a great balance of listen to your body, but push yourself just a little bit. And he kept on saying, you know, this is, this is not a sprint, you know, it's a long-term thing. And just because everything's not fixed in the first week or two, that doesn't mean that it won't be fixed in a month or two. And he had a great way of seeing both the short-term and the long-term and wrapping it all into one. I'm sure, man, that's, that's probably a hard balance to find, but it was super important to me and he did it very well. Yeah, and knowing Aaron, I, I can completely <laughs> see that. Um, I actually have another question for you, Jenna, while I have you. So you mentioned cancer pain versus surgery pain. Can, right. you, can you speak to that a little for the people that are with us today? Well, um, of course, cancer pain is going to be because disease is affecting the area that it has set into. And um, the surgery pain, um, that's going to be nerves and muscles and all kinds of things like that. Plus, um, after surgery treatment pain, you know, and just another fun third category that might be joints and that might be neuropathy in your feet and hands because of medications that have nothing to do with surgery. Um, and so I feel like, um, the scar tissue, oh my goodness, that's a huge thing with um, these kinds of surgery. Scar tissue can really, really just be terrible. Stretching that out, massaging that and all that kind of thing. Um, because I could notice the areas that felt better after I would go in for um, a, a physical therapy session or doing my exercises at home, it helped me distinguish that, oh, that was nerve pain or scar tissue pain or different things like that. Don't fear that just because there's some pain in that area, that means disease is returning. So um, yes, I still am very vigilant at keeping up with my doctors and, and paying attention to things, but it's a huge tool in my toolbox to know that those are two very different things. And I don't have to live in fear and anxiety that every, every mm -hmm. single pain is disease. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, I, I have heard that, Jenna, before of people that part of what physical therapy or occupational therapy is helping educate to understand some of those things. Right. Um, thank you for sharing. Uh, sure. I am going to ask my friend Diane. Um, uh, so is this cancer rehab thing something that's available in all areas, Diane? So would, would any physical therapist be able to treat the issues you had after your cancer treatment? I think generally as therapists, we are given the tools from school on how to treat an orthopedic issue. When it comes to cancer rehab, the, the issues that we're experiencing as cancer patients are orthopedic in nature. So yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, I think any generalized therapist can definitely help with some of the physical aspects that are arising from the cancer treatments. But beyond that, there are things that as a cancer rehab specialist that I look for based on the additional training that we got for the oncology patients. You know, what does a recurrence for certain um, cancer diagnosis looks like? Or, you know, um, the excessive fatigue that we may be feeling during treatment may be something that, um, just a regular orthopedic specialist may not be familiar on how to address because the fatigue for a normal person is different from cancer related fatigue. Yeah. Um, the neuropathy aspect may not be well versed as well. So there are other components that um, we take, we look at and really hone into um, besides just what's manifesting um, physically. 
Yeah, I think what's really interesting, Diane, for people to know is this is still an emerging area of practice, you know, and um, I think all of you on this call would know that, you know, what you were told five years ago about your cancer diagnosis and therapy, it changes very quickly. But cancer rehab is still, and this is Revital's mission, people, so apologies about the soapbox, it is not standard of care, not everybody in cancer that's being treated for cancer is referred for therapy. And research shows us that 60 to 90% of people being treated will have an impairment that therapy can help. Um, I have another question that I'm gonna sort of do a round robin on all of you. And this question I will tell you first and then I'll ask you individually. How, uh, the question is, how far into the cancer diagnosis were you before beginning cancer rehab? Okay, so uh, Jenna, how far were you into your cancer journey before you started therapy? Um, I was about five years in. My first go around where I had the major surgery, um, the doctor didn't prescribe any therapy at all. Um, lots of issues came from that surgery that were just terrible that I was just told, oh, well, you're alive. So Bye. you're just going to have to live that way. Thankfully, we moved to a new state. Yay, Texas. <laughs> and um, the, the clinician in for the second go around of my cancer, um, the clinician said, oh, hey, that neuropathy is something that I just heard. You know, we partnered with select medical and the therapy um, that, that you guys um, give. And they had just been to some kind of a seminar about it. And she said, here, try this. And my doctor here was like, sure, if you want to try that, I support it. That'd be great. So um, that time, let's see, I had had a, a really terrible lung biopsy in February, did not have therapy until October. Right. Um, so first go around, it was about five years after the worst. The second go around, it was, you know, a, still a good several months. And I like to remind people, Jenna, that very few people have a knee surgery without being referred to physical. I know. Therapy, right. But, then right. You, you know, we have a major disease and the treatments that the, and the surgeries and the chemo and the radiation and, and people uh, like your story is telling at home, trying to work on that. Uh, right. James, how long uh, into your journey before you started uh, cancer rehab? Well, I had my, my I, I was diagnosed in uh, 2019 and had surgery. Uh, no, yeah, I was diagnosed in October, had surgery in November. Got approved for chemotherapy uh, in, got approved in December and started in January, 2020. And in the course of them attempting to, to come up with a modality of treating the, the colon cancer, they uh, made me wear the Revital program. And I really got to give credit to my oncologist right. who suggested it would be a good thing, particularly given all the factors about my personality. <laughs> and so that worked out because around, if my recollection is correct, it was September 2021, we started working because we had the COVID uh, lockdown that, that kicked in big in 2020. And I'm like, well, how are we going to do this thing? And uh, modern technology stepped up, you know, I dusted off a laptop that had a webcam, not the webcam I'm using today, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> uh, my entire program with uh, uh, Miss uh, Meehan has been done remotely. And I think uh, Dr. Amjad deserves a lot of credit for saying, hey, this is going to yeah. help you. Yeah, so I would say, James, that you definitely have an oncologist that's really on the cutting edge of things um, that identified how we could work alongside your treatment. Uh, Aaron, how far uh, into your journey until you started your cancer rehab? It was about six weeks after the surgery. So right as I um, was transitioning back to work and I was officially yeah. not on disability anymore, um, that was right when I realized I had the need to to pursue that. Um, and I sort it out yourself, correct? So you're yeah, right. it was yeah. you realizing I can't go back to work without something changing. Yeah, yeah. Right. and I, I don't know how I walked out of surgery without an oncologist at all. 
like I, I, I don't know if I missed something or right. if or if the, the hospital missed something, but right. I, I really got lucky. So yeah. Well, you advocated for yourself. Diane, at any point in your journey, did you do cancer rehab? So unfortunately, I did not. Um, I think that's the reason why I started getting really involved in cancer rehab before I even joined the revital team was that it was that was the missing aspect for me. Um, you know, we're going through like months to years of treatment and, you know, they just think that you're just going to bounce back naturally. Um, where I felt the most loss was probably like towards the end where, you know, you're so used to seeing all of your medical teams at a routine basis. And then you get that clear congratulations. You don't have cancer anymore. And it's like, you're lost and go live your life is what they say. And you don't even know what that life looks like anymore. Cause you were just in this cancer bubble for like a long period of time. So that's when I realized, I wish I had someone to kind of guide me through, like help me get stronger, help me figure out like what to do and not be so scared to do it on my own for the first time. Um, would have been really helpful. You might be able to help me with my next question. It's sure. about what we do. What do we do for neuropathy, Diane? Oh, well, I, I mean, every therapist is different. Um, but I personally like to do, uh, depending on the severity, we were taught how to do some taping techniques to help calm mm -hmm. the um, neuropathic symptoms down a little bit and give you a little bit more control of whether it's your feet or your fingers. Mm -hmm. um, I also do a lot of sensory boxes. So uh, I create boxes for my patients. I give them a list to scavenge or hunt into the backs. And so we're looking at the like kinesthetics. Are they able to feel things and know what that item is without having to look at it? What about you, Kirsty? Uh, very similar. If it's in the feet, uh, I know I'm an OT, but I'm very functional. I like balance stuff too. Um, so again, just using a different system. I think it's important to note that we cannot cure it. But Diane, would you say that it helped? Like my patients speak very positively of taping or the sensory approach. Would you agree with that, that patients really do find it improves with therapy? Yeah, so if I do the taping and I see that there's a marked improvement in their symptoms or they're able to functionally go through the day um, with the taping on, I actually teach them how to do it themselves or a family member so that they can you know, manage yeah. this in the long run. Yeah, done a, a few of those sessions myself. Okay, <laughs> I am going to, uh, I'm going to direct this question to James and then anyone else afterwards is welcome to jump in. The next question is about fatigue. And we know that the treatment can leave overwhelming fatigue. James, was doing rehab helpful to that fatigue? Oh, very much so. Yes, uh, because anything that strengthens the body uh, improves its performance. And since we did a whole body type of approach, including cardiovascular, uh, that helps a lot because, you know, if you can breathe and your heart rates up and the blood's flowing, you're able to maintain your alertness and, and, and go forward. So I found that, and my sessions ran for about an, uh, 50 minutes to an hour. Okay. And I found that uh, sometimes after a session, I take a nap, but, but uh, overall the very next day I was like, okay, this was good. This is good. It's a good, it's a good feeling that comes from working out. Yeah. So to the person that asked that, I will speak to research shows us one of the strongest tools we have for cancer related fatigue is exercise. It seems counterproductive because you think I'm so tired. How am I going to do anything? Um, it doesn't always have to look like an hour session at all. Sometimes it's a five minute walk. I see Jenna nodding. So can you speak a little for me, Jenna, about for you, what sort of level exercise helped with your fatigue? Well, I mean, all ranges. Some days I would only feel like the five minutes. Other days I began to just amass all of these points, if you will, toward better energy. And I joined a gym, which I didn't, I hadn't joined a gym even before cancer. And it was just like, I can't believe I'm in a gym today. But the next day I may not have that much energy, but what I found for me personally 
is that um, when you're in pain, whether it's even a small nagging, I just feel kind of cruddy today. My hands and my feet kind of ache. And if, you know, doing a little bit of movement, opening up a lot of um, the pathways of your body, learning how if I just stretch out my back, it's going to help everything in the front. If I stretch out my rib cage where there's, you know, scar tissue, it's going to help my back not hurt so bad. And all of that that fits together, you would be shocked at how emotionally you feel lighter and you feel like, hey, I think I am not going to be crabby that I have to make dinner tonight, or <laughs> I'm going to go out and see my friends because I don't feel so terrible. And so I think for me, the emotional that stuck with the physical um, is um, that piece that led to a reduction of fatigue um, that you, wow. you can't take, you can't take those two things apart. Yeah. I, I think that's really key point. And we all know exercise. I mean, we all hear it. It can reduce right. risk of recurrence. It can help with fatigue. It can help with neuropathy. It really is. I mean, like you said, we don't all necessarily want to go to the gym, but exercise can serve many purposes and it can look very different for each person. I am mindful um, that we are going to run out of time because there's so many questions here, but I'm just going to ask a round robin question. I'm going to start with Aaron. And Aaron, what did therapy just sort of briefly, what did a typical therapy session look like for you? Sure. Um, I would, um, I would come in and meet with Jessica and she would, um, ask me how I was doing to kind of go over, over that. She would, if it was early on in the time where I had the swelling that I was trying to control, she would help with the, um, the massage and sort of instruct me on that. And then as, as we had that under control, we did more, um, worked on some exercises to more of a physical therapy kind of a, a thing. Excellent. And uh, James, can you let me know? I know you've already told me that you did tele-rehab and they're about 50 minutes, but what's sort of one of the things you really enjoyed in your sessions with Deanna? Uh, she was very, uh, very good at motivating me. And also she was very meticulous in keeping track of my progress. And that kind of triggered my own internally competitive self. So you strike me as someone, reps, you strike me as someone that would like to know the data, James. So have you improved? Can you do things longer, things like that? Was that important to you? Oh, yes. I particularly like the fact that, that she kind of said, okay, I expect you to do X amount of minutes per week now. And we're going to do it because I met with her twice, twice a week, uh, you know, every week. So I'm like, okay, all right, no off days. It's like, it's like you know, there's no off days to getting healthy again. And there were moments where I did falter. There were, there were some times where I, I just – couldn't beat the, the side effects, but those moments became rare. And I'm right. happy to say that on May 11th of this year, she uh, would do these evaluations. And my last evaluation was May 11th of this year. And I set a new personal record. Amazing. On repetition. Yeah. yeah so. Right. And so I think that's the other thing. Obviously, uh, physical therapists are exercise specialists. So they help you do return to movement safely. Um, and I think what you're telling us is that Deanna really helped you know your progress with that. Um, I'm going to ask a, a final question of each of you. So, uh, Diane, what is the one thing you would like others dealing with cancer and its treatments to know? I think what I would want people to know is that you're not alone um, and that these physical, like, impairments that you're feeling or this pain is something that you don't have to live with um, and that there are people out there who have the training to help you combat this and get you back to uh, your normal like back to your normal life even sometimes even better yeah jenna what is the one thing you would like people going through cancer and its treatments to know it's not going to be like this forever it is not going to be like this forever. And the more that you can ask some questions at your own rate, don't overwhelm yourself. 
Aaron, I'm like you. Every once in a while, I would make the mistake of Googling things, and that is not always the best thing to do. But, you know, ask questions. Ask questions of the nurses, not just the doctors. It was a nurse that sent me to the Revital program. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to talk to other people who have had cancer as well. Um, at your own rate, obviously you can't stand in front of a fire hydrant and drink, but as you, as you can just, yeah. you know, breathe, just open up and breathe and, and see what's out there. And it's going to be different. It's going to, it's not always going to be like this. Right. And I think that's really important to know. It's not linear. It's not always downhill. It's not always uphill. Um, and that's life uh, in general. Right. Um, but more so when you're in cancer treatment. Aaron, what is the one thing you would like people to know? Well, I've, I've hit on it a couple of times, but um, like Jenna was saying, you need to be your, an advocate for yourself. You can, um, the, the doctors are, are going to do their best but to help you, but you need to know what's going on with your body. You need to um, seek out another opinion, seek out a different specialist, um, talk to people, get, get lots of um, input from from as many different reliable sources as possible and really sort of take over ownership over your the, the journey that you're going to be on um yeah amazing information uh, knowledge to share i think because i think we all heard everyone had a different experience james was sent early to therapy and aaron had to find it for himself um james is there one thing that you would like for people to know about cancer rehab and the cancer process? I would say it is a tool that will help you navigate your cancer journey. So make use of it. Yeah, I think what a perfect uh, way to close it out. Um, I could not thank this panel uh, uh, enough. I don't think there's enough thank yous. I think it's really brave of you and to be so honest and to share your stories. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as me. We did have a few questions about how can we find this cancer treatment? So uh, I will ask you, please join us for our next Living Well Beyond Cancer series. Uh, we're gonna have some slides up. We have our website, uh, www.revitalcancerrehab. Com. We have a phone number, 844-473-8485. You can also see any of our past presentations on our website on the Living Well Beyond Cancer section. We have presentations for those that asked about neuropathy and fatigue and cognition. So those are all available on the website as well as upcoming presentations. Please follow us on social media. Um, please share your stories. Let people know where they can get the care they need. And we really hope you all get to live well beyond cancer. Thank you, everyone.